Peace and blessings, love and light, and welcome to another edition of the How Now podcast, where we talk about how to live in the now. I'm your host, Kim Martin Raymond, minister, author, spiritual life coach, and founder of Redefining You LLC, where I help my clients to realign themselves, mind, body, and spirit. So excited to have you all here with me again for another edition, and I'm excited about my guest who is here joining me. I haven't seen her in a while and it's wonderful to see her beautiful face. And, you know, I want her to jump right in. Once we, uh, you know, talk about the title of the show, our title of this show this evening is Expatriation in the Now. Okay, some people are like expatriation, what is that? SAT word. We're going to talk all about it. We're going to dive in deep with this beautiful woman who is right here to the left or to the right of me, whichever side of the screen you're on. (laughs) And as is customary with the How Now podcast, I'm going to have her introduce herself at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kimberly. (laughs) So my name is Shay Cannon. And, you know, in the business world, my title is fractional COO. That's a chief operating officer. And I know people are like, what the heck is the fractional part? Like, I, I think I know what a COO is. But what is the fractional part? That just means part-time, right? I have more clients than just one client. And so I'm, a, I'm on a fractional basis. I am a C, e, uh, COO, I'm sorry, for each of them. And so that just means I have more than one client that I do my services for. Um, and so what do I do for them, right? And who are my clients? So my clients are entrepreneurs and small business uh, CEOs who um, are ready to go to the next level with their business. And sometimes that means hiring a team. Sometimes that means systematizing and, you know, know, automating and, and, you know, just kind of figuring out what the processes are. Because a lot of businesses don't understand the difference between growth and scale, right? So you made a whole bunch of money in one month and you're stressed out. That was growth. Right. Right. Um, You're making a whole bunch of money and it's going smooth sailing because you have processes, um, you have a team that's scaling. No matter how many people come in that you service, you're smooth sailing, you're cool. That scale. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I help um, small businesses with that. And I love it. It's, it's my passion. And I came to it in, in um, you know, unique ways, uh, because I think that when we think C-suite, right, CEO, COO, CMO, CTO, you think <laughs> those things, you think of corporate America. Right. Uh, corporate America, you know, wants you to have certain credentials. And so I don't have an MBA. I don't have a business degree. Um, what I have is life experience. I've been a, an entrepreneur in one way or another since middle school, selling candy. Uh, and so that I've evolved. And so I learned early, you know, don't get high off your own supply. Stop eating the candy. <laughs> You want to make money from the candy. You know? <laughs> I learned things like, you know, you have to reinvest in your business. So you stopped eating the candy and you sold it, but then you spent the money and went back and realized, oh, wait, I don't have no money to buy more candy. Right. Okay. So I learned valuable information, right? right. Um, and so I love what I do. Um, I am from Birmingham, Alabama. That is where I was raised. That is my hometown. Um, I am definitely from the South. Um, and so I, I, I have stopped cold switching since leaving corporate America. So you're going to hear all this country, all this <laughs> Alabama. You're going to hear it. Um, So I always say that I was raised in Alabama, but my business was raised in Georgia. And that's how I know Miss Kim. I met her in Georgia. Um, But I now live in the beautiful city of Playa uh, del Carmen, Cantana Ru, Mexico, um, two blocks from the beach. And so uh, that's why I'm here, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Again, like I said, a pleasure to have you on the show a pleasure to talk about this topic because it's so timely. Expatriation is the term that is used. And uh, as you mentioned, you are from Alabama and now you are residing in Mexico. And I think, uh, you know, my my interest in in bringing up this topic and talking about expatriation is because as we were coming up on the elections and you know, a lot of political things were going on during that time, I started to hear a lot about people talking about moving to a different country and and no longer wanting to to reside in the United States for all intents and purposes, whether it was political, social, they were just interested in moving, you know, for that reason. You also heard a lot about businesses that were 
you know, a lot, a lot of businesses were outsourcing and, and looking to, to move their businesses overseas. And some people were moving, you know, out of the country. I have a, a dear friend who I went to high school with who moved to Japan for her, you know, to live there, you know, to continue the work that was going on with her business on an international level. So I heard different reasons why people were, were moving out of the country, but you know, it, it just seemed like there was a little bit of a surge, and I was just curious, like, well, what's going on, and 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 what's the thought behind it, and 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 what's the rationale behind it, and so so that's kind of where I wanted to where I want to start. You started in in um, Alabama. Were you doing your similar business that you're doing now there in Alabama first before you moved out of the country, or were you or or did it expand or grow into that? So um, basically in Alabama, I was a paralegal and the biz my business on the side at that time was not yet full time was um, publication services. So I helped, um, you know, people to write their book and to self publish it on Amazon. Um, and I did the services and I, I pretty much learned that, um, you know, a lot of independent authors were getting taken advantage of because they didn't understand the process. Right. Um, and, and the process seemed bigger than what it had become. I mean, it's the days of waiting three years to write a book and going to a cabin in the woods and all that kind of stuff that we used to hear growing up. It's not even the way people write books anymore. In fact, um, if you write, if it takes you that long to write a book, the book is probably too long and people don't want to read it. Um, so nowadays, you know, the short reads are what's best. Um, niching down something that may have been a couple of chapters or a section and making that a full book right. is what the, you know, the running um, thing to do is and what people have come to expect. Um, when I moved to Georgia, um, it was for uh, a better lifestyle as a paralegal. Mm -hmm. So I made more money as a paralegal. So being the paralegal and bringing my publication business, which of course was virtual anyway, you mm -hmm. know, I'm now making over six figures. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, that lifestyle was great. You know, I, I my, my law firm was in Buckhead, you know, I'm making, I'm making good money. Um, I have a nice house out in, in the burbs, as they say. Um, but, you know, that, that commute, that hour commute, uh, it took me, man, I, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. You know, from Birmingham, if you are 20 minutes away, right. I'm sorry, if you are 20 miles away, that's about 20 to 30 minutes, right? right. So it, yes. it just killed me that I live 20 miles away and that's an hour. Like, I, I just... And right. It took a long time for me to wrap my head around it until I just decided, you know, quit fighting against it because it's not changing. So mm -hmm. I used to spend that time in the car doing nice things, listening to right. podcasts and listening right. to books on tape and stuff, right? <laughs> um, but what, what happened was um, corporate America is just not necessarily for old rebel like me. Um, there's a lot of office politics, you know, there's a lot more to it than being the best at what you do, because Lord knows I was the best at what I did. Um, but I don't want to deal with all the extra stuff um, that, that has no bearing, you know. Um, so it was my birthday, I think it was. Um, so that was 2017. Um, and it was it was my birthday week. And usually, I go out the country for my birthday or I travel mm -hmm. somewhere. But mm -hmm. this that particular year, I did not travel. I just went to see the Cirque du Soleil show mm -hmm. um, in the underground, right? And I didn't travel because I had invested in business coaching for myself. And that coaching program was like 10K, right? So right. I, you know, I had to sit down with the little extra stuff. Right. Um, but I just needed to know how to take my business to the next level because I had the goal of freedom. Mm -hmm. I want, and I saw entrepreneurship as my way of freedom. Uh, let me go full 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 time into this thing, um, and but not have to change my lifestyle too much. In right. fact, I decided what I want with this freedom is I want to eventually not just become a full time entrepreneur. I want to become an entrepreneur that lives a life on vacation. That's what I want, right? Now, right. at the time, didn't know what that looked like exactly. In fact, I was into tiny houses at the time, y'all, right? So I thought I was going to be getting land in different states in the South. You know, let me get some land in Tennessee, some land in Florida, some land right. in Alabama, some land in Georgia. And I'm going to move my little tiny house around. And I'm going to be good, right? Right. And so that's how I imagined it at first. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I come... You know, I wasn't off work. I didn't travel. I go to the little uh -uh, Cirque du Soleil show and I was a little upset because the show wasn't even the best Cirque du Soleil. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Come to work the next day. You know, I'm at work the next day. I was at work on my birthday. I'm, I'm a little salty. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. right. A little salty already. Right. Um, and I get to work and um, one of my head attorneys called me into his office and he's telling me about these things, you know, these complaints, this, 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 this. I know you don't do it, but and as soon as he said, I know you don't do it, but because as he's saying it, I'm like, but I don't do those things. I don't understand why I'm in here. Wow. Um, and so when he said, I, I know you don't do it, but and he kept talking. I was like, see, this is that sugar honey ice tea. Mm-hmm. I don't want to deal with it, right? right. Uh, and I was like, this don't make no sense. And I remember just going in my head, and he's and he's in the background, almost like the adults on Charlie Brown, right? Oh, wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. Um, and I remember just thinking, yeah, I think I think I want to quit. Like I think I think I don't I think I'm done. Now keep in mind I had just started the coaching program. You know I haven't mm-hmm. really made headway. You mm-hmm. know in the coaching program, mm-hmm. but I was like, yeah, I think I'm done. And so, you know, I kind of come back in and, and focus on what he's saying or whatever. And he ends up with, oh, well, I appreciate you, you know, taking this well and, and listening. I was like, yeah, okay, you know, no problem. Have no idea what the man said. But I know his experience is, you know, he says something that don't make sense. I immediately tell him that don't make sense. You know, or I say something right. back or, you know, right. I'm that rebel. So I'm not going to be quiet. You right. know what I'm so the fact that I was inside my head and was quiet, he thought, you know, I'm absorbing the information. I'm going to get in line with whatever he said. God knows what he said. Um, and so that was his first time experiencing that for me. He had no idea that in my mind. I'm saying, oh, no, I'm done with this. <laughs> so I go to my desk and I, and I said, I said, okay, you shouldn't make such a decision based off of, you know, this impromptu moment. Uh, you know, give it some time. See how you feel tomorrow. Sleep on it. See how you feel tomorrow. Pray about it. Right. So that was a Wednesday. I woke up on Thursday. And I was like, yeah, I still want to quit. <laughs> I still want to quit. But I'm going to give it one more day. I went to work and I said, okay. The first thing, I used to have this one box rule, right? You know, keep all of your, you know, the stuff that you have at work that's your personal stuff should be able to fit in one box. That's so right. You never have to leave out of here either because right. you quit or they put your rebel butt up out of here. You know, all your stuff fit in the that's box right. and you can just go on about your business. That's well, right. I started looking around and I realized, Girl, you got way more than a box worth of stuff here. What are you doing? So I said, you know what? I haven't made a decision yet, but but today though, we're gonna get down to this one box room. Um, so you know, I cleaned up my area and I got all my stuff together. I got somebody to help me, you know, in secret take my stuff to the car at the end of the day. Um, and so my area just looked clean. It didn't look like, you know, I had right. took everything like I was gonna quit. It didn't look right. that way, but right. it did look clean. Came in the next day, which was a Friday, and I decided. Yeah, I still want to quit. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, my goal is to turn in my resignation by noon. Mm-hmm. But what I know about, um, you know, po- office politics is right. uh, when you say you quit and it's unexpected and, you know, they get salted, they'll tell you to leave the day. That's right? Right. That's so right. I said, I don't want to leave my coworkers in a bad spot. So let me look at everything that I'm working on. I'm going to make sure everything is caught up. I'll make sure that um, the instructions for what happens next is, next is clear. I'm going to make sure that anything that I've created a process for, mm-hmm. you know, the SOP for that is clear. I have everything down. So it took me all the way till noon to right. do that. Um, and so I sent that, that bad boy by email. And baby, don't let them stay a secret. You know, it's a little rumbling oh, in the office. Of not. You know, I'm trying to, you know, help out. You know, I, I just told them, you know, it's a two-week notice. However, you know, I'll stay to train whoever you need me to train for however long you need me to train. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so at that point, they was like, what? Like, what farm are you going to? Not going to a farm. Right. Uh, well, where, where are you going? You know, I'm not, I'm not going to anybody's farm. So, you right. know, it, it's fine. And so that knocked them off. But so, you know, I had already hit a milestone early. So I'm already purging and just flying into this, you know, this full-time entrepreneurship right. early. I'm thinking it's going to take me a year. <laughs> nope, didn't take me a year. And so I get home, you know, and I, and, you know, I finally have my last day and I finally, like, I'm really immersed in my business and I've switched over from just publication services to entrepreneurial coaching and, you know, everything is going well. In fact, I look up and I realize, girl, you lowered your expenses a little bit, but you really are p- having changed your lifestyle. You're paying mm-hmm. for all of this stuff with your business. Wow. You know what I'm saying? With your business. So at the time, my youngest son was in high school. 
And I had a talk with him before I decided um, to do it. It was a part of the decision process. And he was like, you know, do what you need to do. Um, and I explained to him how, you know, we haven't, you know, I don't even know if in your lifetime we've been on a budget, but, you know, we're going to go to a budget um, to, until my business takes off or whatever. So we did fine with all of that, right? So it comes time for me to renew my lease, right? So it's that was 2017 when I became mm -hmm. a full-time entrepreneur. A year later in 2018, it's time for me to renew my lease and I'm realizing I don't need this big house anymore. Um, it's, it's time for me to go ahead and downsize. Let me, I should be able to save, you know, $500, $800 right. if I, you know, go from five bedrooms to two, three. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You don't you don't save $500, $800. You might save $100 to $200, which don't make no daggum sense. Right. right. So I'm like, OK, well, I could go back home to Birmingham, Alabama and definitely save money. But who the heck wants to go back home to Birmingham, Alabama? And that's when it hit me. You don't have to go to Birmingham, Alabama. You actually can live and work your business from anywhere in the world. That's what you set it up to be. And it's that. So two years early, I decided to go ahead and live that life on vacation. And so my first stop was Belize. My second stop was supposed to be between Mexico or Colombia. I couldn't decide till it came the day for me to buy my ticket and ticket to Mexico was cheaper. And so <laughs> I'm here. I've been here three years wow. and I love it. People keep saying, are you going to stay? Where are you going next? And so, hey, to be continued. To be continued. Look, to be continued. But right now, <laughs> you're right there. Yes. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. I think the fear factor for yeah. a lot of people, people that fear that that fear of or that failure to launch, or yeah. that fear of just jumping and diving in and and trusting the process that you've created, yeah. you know, is what keeps people from, you know, saying, you know, I, I'm going to do that, you know, because because I'm sure that there are some some steps that took place, just like you were saying, you, I believe that that when you were posting that you were moving and you were talking about Belize, I believe that. And I was like, wow, yeah. I, was going to I was like, wow, you know, yeah. totally surprised by, by, you know, just the fact that, you know, someone would just up and move, you know. Yeah. Do you because, remember the comments on that post though? Do you remember those comments? Very few of them. But People were like, losing their mind, right? <laughs> they were like, don't go to Belize. They're killing Americans. Oh it's God. not safe. It's a lot of crime. It's this, it's that. So now their fear is being put on me. Well, you don't think I'm smart enough to do my due diligence and now you're telling me all this? Like, and so is that not indicative of when you want to be brave and do something and you share with others, if you're not secure and confident in your decision, their fear can talk you out of your dream. That's right. That's right. And that's key. That's key. You, you know, like you said, you do your due diligence, you find out what it is, what's necessary, what the process is. And sometimes we make it out to be more than it is, or it's not quite as difficult. Sometimes it is. But just like you said, that's where you do the homework. You do the work. Yeah, you do you all know? of that. And so I have a funny story, right? Because, you know, we're, we're human. And that's why we have to watch who we're around. We have to watch who has an opinion and who, whose information we take in because it affects us, right? Mm -hmm. So me, so the thing about me and fear is people think I'm fearless. And that's not true because they're only on the outside looking in. It's not that I don't feel fear. It's that this girl right here is so stubborn and such a rebellion. I'm going to rebel even against myself because I want what I want, right. right? So I don't let fear stop me. I'm going to rebel against fear. I'm still going to get what I want. And so I, I wanted to go. People were saying different things. I'm going back and rechecking my research, right? And I'm like, no, I think it's okay. You know, I'm taking my son. I'm like, oh, Lord, if something happened, it's not just me. It's my youngest son, who at that time was a senior in high school. And I was like, you know, I've already heard different things from family members. Well, why would you take him away in his senior year? This, that, and I was like, he has a choice and he wants to come. You know, all of these wow. things. Wow. So imagine this look picture this believes <laughs> the bedroom of a two-story home <laughs> you okay um the two-story home has a nice yard it has two dogs um that comes with the house okay wow. and i soon i soon realized that in belize much kind of like um, parts of mexico people have dogs and it's like a part of their alarm system is what right. it is right? right well another part of their home protection is they usually have some type of fence wall or something this particular house had a cement wall 
going mm-hmm. all around it and a huge gate in the front, right? Mm-hmm. At the top of the wall, um, what they do in Belize and some places even in Mexico is they use cement and broken glass to make kind of barbed wire. Same right? thing in Haiti. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so, so basically, you know, that's, that's kind of for your protection. People can't come in, whatever. Um, this particular house, one of the things I loved about it is half of the ground level was only screened in. It was only screened in. Mm-hmm. It was no glass. Um, you know, a screen and the screen that like you could take your finger and probably touch the outside screen. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? If you uh-huh. went through the little, uh, right. you know, little the frame. Uh-huh. Um, and so that part was like the dining room. It was the kitchen area and it was um, one of the full bathrooms. Uh, and then there was French doors, glass French doors uh-huh. that led to the rest of the house that was actually the two story part. And wow. so our bedrooms were beyond or the rest of the house was beyond those glass doors. Right. One night, it's, it's, it's in the middle of the night, y'all, right? And I hear something. I, I, don't, I can't make that noise out. Now, the front of the house is, is a little less traveled street. Wow. There's a house to the right of us. Um, there's jungle to the left of us, and there's jungle behind us, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but in front of us is wide open, you right. know, other houses, other right. you know, land, all that kind of right. stuff. But it's not a major street. Hear a noise. So I wake up. I'm like, did I? Did I actually hear something? I hear it again. So I'm sitting up. And then my son comes in the room. And he said, did you hear that? I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm going in the kitchen, right? I get the knives. I, I close up, you know, the, the French doors and lock them. And we sit there in the living room, which is right in the room with the French doors. And we got knives and we sitting on the couch, right? right. Sitting on the couch and we listening. You know what I'm saying? We listening. We might hear a little rustling here. We go look out a window. We don't see nothing. We sitting there. I, th- I, I don't even know how long we sat there, y'all. Because <laughs> it might have been 30 minutes before my son just up and said, I'm not doing this no more. I'm going to sleep. Right. I said, right. oh, shit. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's go to sleep then. You know? So I sat there a, a little while by myself. You know, I just kind of went and checked all the windows, right. make sure all the windows were locked, make sure that right. the um, French doors are locked. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I go back to sleep. The next morning, you know, I talked to the landlord and I told her, I said, hey, you know, I realized last night after hearing these noises that this house is not necessarily secure, right? Like if they make it, if anybody makes it over the wall, you know, you can pretty much just push this screen in and this, these French glass doors are interior. These are not outside doors. Right. So they can, they can get in here. Um, and she was like, okay, okay. And, and, and now I know she's probably trying to keep from laughing, y'all. Um, but basically what happened was she, um, installed motion lights in the back. Um, and what else did she do? She did something else. Um, and I can't remember what she, but she did something else. And she basically did it just for me. Right. And then she told me, she said, Hey, um, so did the dogs bark? And I said, no, ma'am. And she said, so that was probably like just an animal because that's jungle behind you. So it could have been like a little wild boar or something like that. She said, but if the dogs didn't bark, it was an animal. And I said, oh, Okay, and I started cluing in, and y'all, that's right, because if you walk past that gate, them dogs are on you. Right. But if it's a dog, another dog, walking, they don't say anything. Right. They're like it's another animal. But y'all, my mind that night, though, sitting beside my son on that couch <laughs> with kitchen knives, he got one, I got one, right, was the marauders were scaling the wall, right, coming right, in, and right. everybody on the Facebook post was right. <laughs> That's right. That's I right. know, right? So right. Yes. so at that point, when you come out of it, you realize how ridiculous you were acting. You know, you kind of realize, okay, okay, let's calm down. You know, things, right. you know, you know, let this talk get to you and you're not even enjoying life the way you're supposed to be enjoying right. life because it's marauders scaling right. your wall. Right. <laughs> so and just like you said, it, a lot of it is, 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 is not being educated yeah. about certain areas and, mm-hmm. and, you know, listening to, to, you know, all of the hype and the propaganda that you hear on the news and everything else like that, that, exactly. you know, like you said, if you, if you fell victim to that, you would be missing out on that opportunity. You would. Yeah. And I mean, it's amazing the family that I made there, um, especially my son. My son, he, to me, he, he's amazing. Um, you know, I would go into town and because he, he would basically do his work online and then he would go into town and be gone until dark. Or if he was out after dark, he'd let me know, you know, I'm going to, because at the time he was 17. And so, you you know, the, at the first few months, he was like, mom, you know, you're going to get comfortable with me leaving without you because I'm not going to sit in this house with you all day while you're right. working. 
Why? Right. Like, I'm not gonna do this. So I, I had to go through a process to let them go because y'all know I was like, wait, wait, in Belize, right. you just gonna go and be free all day? Right. Like, what? Right. And so, yeah, he used to do it. And so, the funny thing was, so he would be gone and doing whatever he wanted to do during the day basketball, swimming, whatever, because we were two blocks from the water then, too. Right. Um, and so, it was amazing how I would go in restaurants and sometimes um, people would be like, you know, Justin just left or Justin was here or Justin, I saw Justin today. Everybody, everybody know Justin. Right. <laughs> everybody know Justin. And even when he came here to Mexico, in my building, um, some of the guys that work for the building don't speak English. They mm -hmm. only speak Spanish. Right. And they still are asking me, where's Justin? Right. They're like, Justin, Justin? I'm mm -hmm. like, he don't even speak Spanish. What was y'all talking about? Right. Like, how was y'all communicating? <laughs> he don't speak no Spanish. I got Spanglish at least. Right. He don't have nothing. Right. How was y'all talking? He has mm -hmm. made friends here. And they ask about him. It's I'm amazing. like, Justin, adios. Like, I, he gone. Like, I don't know what to do. My God. Okay, so so when he when when he moved, when y'all moved to Belize, he yes. was able to, to do school virtually. Like he was able to do school back in the States until he finished to complete his senior year. Well, what he did was the whole first semester he did online. Um, because okay. as you know, Georgia has many online options for a school that are still public school. Um, and so we, we did, we started him on one of those before we left. Um, and then he finished the whole first half of his senior year in Belize. And then when we went home for um, Christmas, uh -huh. For the whole the full month of December, uh -huh. he decided he wanted to go ahead and stay to to uh, you know participate in the senior activities gotcha. for the last part of his senior year. Gotcha. So he actually stayed. So when I came to Mexico, check this out, I came by myself, wow. and it was my first time living by myself. Period. Like ever in life. Period. Right. Right. And I'm out the country living by myself for the first right. time. Living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you're right. Because first you're sitting there like. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden you go, wait a minute. I don't have to do it. I can do what I want to do. Then all of a sudden it's like, I don't ah. do nothing but what I want to do. Let me tell you how. And this is one of the things that people, we're going to get now into. So expatriate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the nickname for that or the abbreviated uh, saying for that is expat, right? right? So expat life is attractive for a few reasons. Um, so let me tell you how I don't do nothing. So I don't wash dishes, I don't cook, I don't clean, I don't do nothing, y'all. Um, I mean, I, I I am full in on convenience. So I'm not one to shop and wear designer clothes and all of that stuff. You know, I had to go through this minimalistic, um, you know, stage to even mm -hmm. get ready to move out of the country. But even in living out of the country, I don't spend a lot of money on stuff. I spend mm -hmm. money on experiences and convenience. Mm -hmm. Because when I tell y'all all I want to do is work and, and have fun, that's all I want to do. I don't want to do the best wow. stuff, and I do not. So the reason why living in another country is so attractive to most people is they realize not only do they not have to deal with some of the microaggressions mm -hmm. as Black people as mm -hmm. they do in the United States, they also are not behind that institutionalized racist uh, eight ball, right? Because what better way to give yourself a better lifestyle and an improved, upgraded lifestyle than to make the U.S. dollar and spend it out in a currency that's worth less than the U.S. dollar, right? right? So you right. have the, the currency rate. And second of all, you have the cost of living. It's very low because you need both, right? Because in Belize, right. baby, that <laughs> no. Nah. So they uh in Belize, their money was only <laughs> two to one, right? So it takes two of their dollars to make one of our dollars. Mm -hmm. But baby, a lamp is forty dollars. They making up for it. So okay. Yeah, so the right. currency might have been two to one, but the cost of living was high. As, I don't know what. You know, right. Okay. And, right. and sometimes when you calculated it out, you was like, this costs more here than it doing in the United States. Why is this lamp forty dollars? You know, what I'm saying right. that's still twenty dollars. I don't buy twenty dollar lamps. This is how you can keep it. Right. You know right. So you need that currency rate and you need that cost of living. So here in Mexico right now, I think the, the exchange rate is about 20 pesos to one American dollar mm -hmm. and the cost of living is very low. So if you wanted to come here with what would be poverty level in the United States, you would still be living a great life here. Right. So if you are actually making good money, um, you, you, I mean, it's almost like, you know, all those days when you wanted to be rich and you wanted to be wealthy, you go to another country and all of a sudden you realize, oh, wait, I am. Right. <laughs> I am. Right. But yeah, right. That, that, that instant upgrade in life design is very attractive um, to a lot of people. And that's why they are realizing, hey, 
you know, I can go over here and have a better life. Right. And I think, and you make an excellent point where you talk about your, the, the exchange rate because you are getting paid in U.S. dollars yeah. and, 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 you know, and you're, you're benefiting from that. It's not like you're getting paid in pesos or anything like yeah. that, because that would definitely dramatically change how, how, how things, you know, how your lifestyle would be. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's important, like you said, people to know those things. It's important for people to understand that, that yes, just like when you, just like in the United States, you know, I, I'm from New York. I moved to Georgia. 13 months after I moved to Georgia, I bought a house. I would have never been able to do that back home in New York because the cost of living was so high. Yes. So it, it, it's, it's almost that same concept, but, but now you're doing it in a place like you said, where you can vacation. You know, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm sitting here like, well, can I do that? And I'm like, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love it. I love it. And then a lot of people, like there's a lot of things out there, YouTube stuff. Um, so I, what I would do, um, it's fine to do, you know, your YouTube research or whatever, but there's, you have to understand most of those people are doing content in a way that sensationalizes things, either in a positive or a negative, right? right? Um, so there's a lot of stuff out there. Oh, uh, you can live a good life of $500, 500 US dollars a month, you know, over there. I mean, you could, but you're going to be living where you don't want to live. You know right. what I'm saying? But you right. could, you know, you could be living better than the locals, but right. you're still not going to want to live right there because you're going right. to be immersed in local stuff. Right. Um, for example, uh, there's going to be the last to get the power turned back on when the power goes out um, right. because of a storm. And when I say last, I mean days. Um, you're going to have to deal with the fact that, um, you know, the type of crime that they have in their neighborhoods is now your crime. You know, right. so when they say it's crime, you know, for example, if they say in the city of Atlanta, crime has increased. Well, how that feels is if you're in Buckhead, it feels a little different than if you're in College Park. You know what That's I'm saying? Right. So, right. Yes, there is crime in Mexico. There is crime in Playa del Carmen. But where I live in the tourist area, the crime looks a little different than where it is with a, where it's only locals. OK, and it's only locals who, who you know, don't really have jobs and, you know, they're, they're fending for themselves. So it's the difference between what we know to be the ghetto and what we know to be regular city life. Right. Right. So people sensationalize things. Oh, it's all this crime and they're killing people in the cartel. Man, let me tell y'all something. If I hear about the cartel one more time, y'all need to quit watching Narcos Mexico. Because, <laughs> yes, the cartel is a part of life here. Right. But but they not meeting me at the mega, which is the Mexican Walmart. They not selling drugs right. to be in the Mexican Walmart. They right. not selling drugs to be at the taco stand with me. They not they not they not doing it. You know right. what I'm saying? In the words of I guess it was Kanye West, they not making money to push a rav for. So right. when they're out there living and doing stuff. I, I don't think right. right. Um, they do have the the the, the little you know, street guys that sell drugs or whatever, they're up and down the tourist strip. But guess what? After they ask you if you want some, I think <laughs> some of the words that you sticky, icky, want some sticky, icky. <laughs> wow. After they ask you and you be like, no, they don't bother you no more. Right. They don't bother right. you no more. But just know your cousin them is coming over here buying the sticky, icky. That's why they're asking you. Right. That's so right. They're not That's asking right. you to push it on you. They're asking you because our cousins is coming here. That's <laughs> and they're buying it. So um, that's, that's why it. they're asking you. But um, you know, most of the crime and stuff is not where we are. And so right. that's just something yet again that we have to realize. But also, you know, that that myth of $300, $500 in living, yeah, right. you can, you really can. But can you speak uh, fluent Spanish? Because nobody in a $500 a month area right. speaks English. And, and Google Translate is not going to help you. <laughs> you say, right. They don't speak the Queen Spanish. Right. So that's not going to help you. Um, right. so, uh, and and right. some of them can't read. So showing them your screen, that none of that's going to help you. So right. um, that's just, you know, some of us think that we can come over here and for $500, we can live a grand lifestyle. And that's right. not true. Can you live a nice lifestyle? Uh, you you want to look at your budget and know what your, your, your pros right. and cons are. Right. Um, you know, what type of lifestyle you want to live. Um, and all those type of things. You have to keep all of that into, um, you take that know, into consideration. consideration. Yeah. So the, the best thing I know to tell people is don't just rely on YouTube and articles and all that kind of stuff. Go on Facebook and, and search for expat in. Search for the country, search for the city in that country, and you will see all kind of Facebook groups that, mm -hmm. that are, have people in it. And they're talking about everyday things for where they are. Right. Mm -hmm. And you get to see what's going on for real and right. sometimes in real time. 
Right. Um, you can even um, get help with finding somewhere to live, get help with trying to, you know, with, with this amount of budget, what would my house look like? You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. Mm -hmm. All of that information is in those groups. Um, and so I love those groups. And so for some of us, you know, we know that we're having a different experience right. than our um, Caucasian allies. And so there are groups that are Black expats in. So search for those groups and you will get the Black lifestyle um, that's going on. Um, but don't just pick the back, the black group, pick the group that just says expat in, which is most likely the white group, um, because they have good information in those two. It's just, uh, you probably gonna laugh at some of their communication and not want to participate in their communication. All right. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. But I mean, I, I love the fact that, you know, there's so much information available mm -hmm. for people to find out. Would you also recommend that they go and visit a couple of times before they make that hard decision to go there, just so that, you know, once you get, you know, go into a group, possibly take some time to go and, and just experience the lifestyle a little bit, just to, you know, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? So um, I'm, I'm looking a little crazy because my, my, my family, my sisters, my brothers, my cousins, what y'all tend to do is go and visit a place and stay on the resort and think you have experienced right. that place you. and you have not. <laughs> um, now, what I will say is fire, the common is a little different than a lot of um, tourist spots and beach towns in that it's very walkable. We have fewer um, resorts than we have like condo slash hotels. Um, and Airbnbs that are good places that would be taken up by resorts in any other place, including Cancun. Like in Cancun, to have the best beach experience, you really have to be on a resort, which is huge and taking up a portion of the beach. But what we know about resorts are most often, they're not very, very walkable. You, right. you go outside, you're going to need a shuttle, right? right. There's nothing right. you can walk to from the resort. Right. Um, that's why resorts tend to be all inclusive and have different things on them so that you don't have to worry about going outside of them. But so I do recommend going to a place, but I recommend going to a place with the information of how you would live as a local, not going to a place being a tourist. That's not, you're not getting the proper information and you, and you've wasted your time. Um, and the funny thing is, and you paying higher prices for everything. So yeah. um, until you come live as a local, you're not even paying the real local prices for things to get an idea of the budget for things. Right. So yeah. Right. I think that's, a, that, that's an excellent point. And that's why I asked the question the way I did, because I mean, my, my husband and I at one point went to Jamaica. We stayed at a hostel for $25 a night. It was not in a resort. We stayed and, and the lady who we stayed with, when she went into town to get her cleaning supplies, we rode with her and we got to meet the locals and we got to sit and talk with them. And, and it was a, a wonderful experience. Someone took us on a tour of one of the, the churches out there and we were able to see somebody in court. You know, they were oh, in wow. a big cage and they had guns. We were just like, what? But, mm -hmm. but we got to experience you know, something outside of just going to the beach and having a, a tequila or having a margarita. Exactly. Just like you said, you have to be a part of of the the experience behind, you know, on the outside of that that resort, you know, platform. You want to be able to get in there and, and get to know the people. And that's something that's that I think is critical. Now, I think the only other thing is, like you said, language barriers. I would yes. think that those things. Now, how did you deal with those types of situations? OK, so another funny story. Right. I was dating this guy at the time that I decided to become an expat. And so he visited me in Belize and he visited me here in Mexico twice. We're no longer together. But he noticed something that even I didn't notice, y'all. And that is that in Belize, okay, so the, the country's language in Belize is English. It's the Queen's okay. English, but it's English. Yes. Um, yes. And so that's what they teach in the schools, but not everybody goes to the schools. Mm -hmm. And so the part of Belize that I was in um, was right under Mexico. So most spoke Spanish or they spoke Mayan, okay? okay? So there were people who spoke English, um, but most spoke Spanish and Mayan. And um, <laughs> uh, when, when my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend came to visit me there, you know, he noticed that, you know, it, it, it was a huge language barrier for me, right? Like, you know, if you didn't speak English, like, I didn't know what you were saying. I didn't try to take time to figure it out, none of that, right? But the time that I was in Belize, um, I was really focused on getting my business really structured, right? And so I picked a spot in Belize that was a very small town. I was not in a tourist place 
where I was in Belize. It was so local that if you missed that farmer's market at 5 a.m. on Friday or 5 a.m. on Monday, you didn't have fresh food for the week wow. because all they, they sold in the um, grocery stores were non-perishables. Right. Um, and so it was that local. Now, when he came to visit me in Mexico, he was like, so since you've been here, you learned Spanish or you learned some Spanish words? I said, no, I took Spanish in, in high school and in college. I knew some words or whatever. He said, do you realize that in Belize, you act like you didn't know any Spanish? You refused to speak it. When people would speak it, you would stop them and be like, okay, can somebody help me, whatever? And I was like, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Wow. But my mindset was different, right? right? When I was in Belize, my mind was like, I need all my brain power to get this business off the ground and make sure my son is doing what he's supposed to be doing in, the, in this online school, making sure that we're safe. All these things were on my right. mind then. I had a block too. I knew some Spanish. Didn't right. even try. Didn't right. even try, y'all. So I get here and I instantly am remembering certain things like, you know, the adjectives and adverbs go behind, you know, all right. these things. I know some stuff. Um, now, the great thing about being in the tourist area is most people in the tourist area are going to be at least a little bilingual. Most of them are going right. to know some English, if not, you know, a, a, a lot of English. Um, and so you can get by. But also, even when you try to speak Spanish or you're trying to learn, um, because if when you're reverent, to their culture and wow. you're respectful like we tend to be um right. especially me being from the south you know we are very respectful right. i tend to speak so i'm all around here hola 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 you know what i'm saying right. but they they enjoy helping you they don't mind supporting you. they don't mind you know teaching you things or whatever i used to go to this one restaurant all the time and the guy just decided he was going to teach me you know he's going to help me learn more spanish right. um and so you know, they, they're forever offering to help you, but right. then you pick up some. Now, right. I'm not, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all can go ahead and be disappointed in me because I've been here three years and my Spanish should be better. And it is not. It is still very much Spanglish, um, mm -hmm. but I get that. I, right. But I do sound like a Spanish speaking toddler. You know, it's going <laughs> to be one word, two words. It's going to be phrases. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not having a full fledged, you know, uh, you know, complete sentence conversation going on. Right. You know, I know how to get by, you know, even with the, with the taxis and all that stuff. You know, I've learned those words, you know, right. ordering my food, you know, go, going around, getting different things. I have that much conversational Spanish, but it's not as fluent as it should be with me being here right. um, three years because I do live in a tourist area. And so I do lean on being in the English speaking parts more so than right. the uh, Spanish speaking parts. So, right. yeah, that makes sense. Now, now, business wise, because so much of, of your business is online, yeah. that are there things that you had to do differently with regards to registering your business? Or, or all of those things that's considered online or those things that are still based out of out of Georgia or out of Alabama? Do you do those things or, or is there some type of crossover or some type of hybrid that happens when you start a business or, or continue a business in another country? So it's different when you're, you're doing your business with the locals of a country mm -hmm. and when you're still doing business with people back in, in the United States. Okay. All of my clients are in the United States. Gotcha. So I don't have to do anything different. But anytime that you are making money um, off of a country citizen, that's when they get involved and they have certain regulations and things like that. For example, that's why um, we, we often hear about work visas for okay. foreign people coming to the United States. But we yeah. don't understand sometimes that we're the foreigner when we're in other countries right. and you can't just go there and get a job. You need a work visa. Like right. it's, it's like that everywhere. You're the foreigner now. You need a work visa. Yeah. So coming on just your passport, you cannot legally come and get a job here. Um, coming with just a passport, you cannot legally just be setting up a business. Now, I'm happy to report that, um, you know, in, in the they call it the black fit, right? The black exit. So a lot of black people, since we talked about Trump, you know, a lot of black people have left the United States to try this expat life. And a lot of them have come to Mexico and a lot of them have come to Playa de Carmen. Mm -hmm. um, and what I am enjoying is that a lot of them are going through the process of getting um, temporary residency and getting um, business licenses and they are opening up businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we have a hair salon here now that does braids and um, takes care of locks. Um, we have, what else do we have? We have different caterers here. We have just opened and had their grand opening this past week. 
Supreme Burger that's located in Decatur, Georgia. There's wow. not a requirement location. Wow. Um, he came here and opened up a burger joint. And so, you know, it's more um, Black people coming here. We have Black promoters that come here and they have, um, you know, social events. Now, mm -hmm. you know, we're opening back up um, and they make money off that. They're promoters and they do different, um, you know, experiences and stuff. And so I'm loving seeing, you know, the Black people coming over here and extending mm -hmm. their entrepreneurship to being here. Um, some of them are only catering to other black expats or other expats. And some of them are catering like the, the restaurant, you know, in the salon, yeah. anybody that wants to come in and spend money. Right. But yeah. Right. And it's, that's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful it's, to, it's, to, to see, to see this. It's great to go home, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Now one other quick question, because I know our time is running, is running close here, that is but, fun. but, you know, like you said, coming over and, 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 you know, setting up in a different country and, and trying to, uh, you know, adapt to the things that are, are going on there. Um, and now I just lost my train of thought of, of what question I want to ask you, but, but being, being able to, to make those kinds of changes do do you have to at a certain point in time uh do anything with regard to your citizenship or does your how does that whole aspect work with the aspect of, of citizenship or, or is it dual citizenship how does that work so it's different in different countries right so here what we can do is get a temporary residency that can then be upgraded um, after a few years to a permanent residency and the residency has nothing to do with you giving up your citizenship in the United States. Now, I will say I read an article where it says that, uh, you know, in, there's been an increase in people giving up their citizenship um, due to the politics in the United mm -hmm, States. Um, mm -hmm. um, it's due to other reasons, but mostly due to, due to the politics. Um, but I don't even think that that's necessarily Black people. Um, for But you don't have to give up your citizenship, um, you know, to kind of immerse yourself. You don't have to do that. Now, different countries to get some type of rights, you may. Um, but there are some residency roles to take and not just citizenship roles, because it's my understanding that um, unless you have a descendant somewhere, right. you don't really get to do dual citizenship if you mm. started off in America, because America mm -hmm. don't really play like that. Um, and so they make you make a choice. Um, but for example, um, you know, my father's side of the family is of German descent. So legally, I can have a dual citizenship mm -hmm. of Germany and America. Mm -hmm. um, but without that descent, you know what I'm saying, with, without that lineage, uh, I would have to, you know, give up my U.S. citizenship to be a citizen in Germany. Gotcha. So it just depends. But the residency, the interesting part of residency um, for Mexico is you have to apply at the embassy in the United States. You start the process there. Yeah. Then you come here to Mexico to complete it. But it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, we have um, immigration attorneys and all that kind of stuff here. I have a great attorney. She handles my immigration issues. She handles all my issues, actually. Um, anything that I run into, because I don't know what the laws are here. So she is my go-to um, for different stuff. Right. So I guess, and, that, and that's good to know, too. Always good to do your research. Have a have an immigration attorney, someone who who knows the the uh, you know rules and regulations in that particular area that you're in. Said that way, you know you're not at a loss. Exactly, so, because what happened was the passport. Your U.S. passport gives you so many rights in other countries. You can enter countries and you're able to stay for a certain length of time, whereas other people have to go through, or I should say, other countries. Um, their, their citizens have to go through a lot of red tape to enter other mm -hmm. countries, and we don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so my passport, your U.S. passport, going to Belize gets you uh, three months, right? Mm -hmm. It can get you up to three months without being bothered. Coming here, you can get up to six months. Now, it's always up to that Im immigration officer, but mm -hmm. you can get up to that amount of time without a problem. Um, but what happened was I couldn't leave to go renew my six months uh, during the pandemic. Oh. Well, uh, well, I didn't want to leave, put it like that. Um, and so when it came time for my time to come up, um, basically I would be here illegally because my quote unquote visa is up because it's past the six months. Right. And you, could, you could be deported. You could be not, you know, 
coming back, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I had to reach out to the immigration attorney um, to see what I needed to do. And, mm -hmm. and because a lot of expats were reaching out, they basically came up with this system where you didn't have to leave and come back. You just had to go and apply with the immigration office um, and pay some money. And then right. they renewed you for another six months. Very good. Very yeah. good. So you see, yeah, because I was going to ask about that, uh, uh, you know, about the pandemic. How have things been there? Uh, you know, what did they, did they have a lockdown type situation like we had here in the States during that, that time? <laughs> it's so funny because, um, so Mexico is one of the few countries that never closed their border. Um, but in the city that I live in, this beach town, it's a whole bunch of Canadians here. Um, and they either live here or live here part of the time. They own property here, all that kind of stuff. But they tend to, it's a lot of them here. Um, so during the pandemic, Canada called all their citizens home because oh you have God. to understand that the pandemic was health related and they have a universal health care system. Right. Um, so basically what they said was bring your butt home because we're we, we not helping you with no health issues where you are. Right. right? So bring your butt home. So most of the Canadians left. Um, so the streets were pretty much empty. Mm -hmm. Right, because nobody was really traveling because they didn't know what this thing was. And all of us that stayed here, you know, the streets were pretty empty. Most of the restaurants are open air anyway. Um, right. And so you were able to kind of not be in crowds of people. Right. Um, but we have in the country of Mexico, we have a stoplight system and it goes by state. And so the, what your numbers are depends on, you know, whatever your numbers are depends, that's what light you get. And red is the is the, the most locked down, right? right? I think it's red, then orange, then um, yellow, then green. Is okay. that what I think it is? Um, and so our our state is Cantana Roo, which has Tulum and Cancun. And so as y'all know, all y'all sisters and brothers was coming to Cancun right. and Tulum. Right. When they felt like the world was opening back up because we were one of the few countries that didn't, you, know, you didn't have to have a COVID test, we didn't lock you out, none of that kind of stuff. And so for a while, our numbers didn't go up at all. And then they started to cry, climb. And so right. when, it, when they started to climb, we started to have tiers of closing down. Gotcha. Um, you know, all businesses have to be closed by 11, you know, might be the first point. Then you had, you know, uh, restaurants and hotels could only be at certain capacities. And then we had close them up, you know, pick up only, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? No alcohol served after right. five, you right. know what I'm saying? They just, they just went in. Um, but the great thing about it for me personally was in my building, in my condo, we had like a rooftop pool, we had a gym, we had a theater, you know, so it was in my, you know, I was in a closed in little city, so I didn't really feel it as much. Right. And so, and then we have great delivery service. They deliver stuff from the mall, from the liquor store, from the pharmacy, from the grocery wow. store and the restaurants. Wow. And so didn't really feel a difference. Right. Right. So as I said, it's amazing the experience. And like you said, you got to experience so many things outside of the pandemic coming that that you didn't really feel the effects as as much. Mm -hmm. But but it's interesting to, to see it from a different perspective. It is. And I got reports from you know you guys in the States because when they opened the red when we when our red light went down, they opened the restaurants and stuff. Um, what they did was put in a system where you had to be certified to open your restaurant. So you right. had to have cleaned it to such a level. Um to reopen. And so for, for about two days, um, leading up to the opening of the restaurants, the whole city smelled like bleach, right? And so I commented on it. And it was funny because uh, one of the people in the United States said, you know, don't nothing here smell like bleach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we had some pretty strict protocols to keep yeah. our numbers down. Yeah. Um, every restaurant, you, you, any public place, you had to have your mask on before you entered. We had sanitizing mats that you stepped on. They took your temperature. They squirted you with hand sanitizer. So basically anything beyond the door is mm -hmm. kind of sanitized. You know Got what I'm saying? It. You don't get to take your mask Got off unless you're at a restaurant and you don't get to take it off until you're at your table. Got so it. we had some great precautions that y'all didn't have. And so, yeah. yes. Yeah. So you see, it's, a, it's a wonderful to get that, that perspective mm -hmm. and, to see, and, and to see the differences and to see you know, some of the challenges. Now, I know you had some severe weather challenges at one point. I remember you posting about, about uh, you know, some some issues with with wet, with weather. So that was yeah, something. It was hurricane. Was right? And so it started, so hurricane season, I think, starts 
It's, I think it supposedly starts August, September, possibly. Um, but this was October. And so on my birthday, October 3rd, I had planned this big rooftop party, pool party, right? We're going to barbecue, have pool party. Well, October 3rd was the very first hurricane of the season. Shut everything down, y'all. Um, and the winds were high. And so the most of the buildings here are concrete. Mm -hmm. you know, they build most of their stuff of concrete. So the yeah. building itself was fine. But there happened to be a pipe in the wall that broke and flooded my apartment. Um, and so I personally had more issues than the average person with that first hurricane. And plus I had a visitor here. So when the second hurricane came, it's like we had a hurricane a weekend, every weekend in October. Oh um, and so when the second one came, I, I just wanted to go ahead and um, evacuate because I had somebody else to consider. And mm -hmm. so we evacuated um, because the power goes off and that first time the water went off. Um, and so we evacuated for the second hurricane, but by the third one, we felt like we was on pros. Um, and the <laughs> third one was the worst one too, by the way. Wow. Um, wow. And so, but we slept right through it, slept right wow. through it because all we had was the power to go off. But as long as that water is off, um, we good. <laughs> so we, we all right with the power being off. But the water, we need the water to be on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's just like with anything else, you you assimilate, you assimilate, or you or you just you know you become you know a product of your environment. You begin yeah. to see the things that are going on, and I guess it's it's it would be like into just like you said, someone coming into the United States, and they're having to to figure things out, and they're having to to you know make the most of of trying to communicate and do th things like that. And so it's interesting to get the perspective. From the other side, yeah. um, you know, because so many people are coming into the United States and when you're going out of the United States, just like you said, now you're the person that is considered foreign and exactly. you have to, and, and you know, and, and you know what, though, Kim, they are so humble here. So they speak English way better than I speak Spanish. And they're always <laughs> apologizing for their English. But you're able to make complete sentences in English, whereas I am not able to make complete sentences in Spanish. <laughs> they go, oh, I apologize. My English is so bad. Uh, no, sir. My Spanish is bad. And I apologize because it's, it's disrespectful is what it is, because I should be doing better than this. And so I really appreciate, you know, your English. Um, and so, yes. And, and then I think back to how, you know, in the United States, people may not speak the Queen's English or right. perfect grammar, but they're able to get their thoughts across. They're able to speak right. words and you know what the heck they're talking about. And so what I'm going to charge people with doing is stop making people feel bad because they don't know English the way that you know English. They know English enough to navigate. So right. give them respect that most people know more than one language. That's the sad part. Most people that come to the United States and, and are learning English and they sound like they dumb to some people, they actually, that is, that's not even their second language. It might be their third, fourth, or fifth. That's right. That's right. I think yeah. that's wonderful. I think that's wonderful. So give me parting words that you want to give to our listeners with regards to expatriate, uh, expatriation. What is something that they should consider or a few things that they should con consider if they're thinking about moving in that direction? Um, I think the number one thing is going to be what life do you want to live? What do you want life to look like? Like really know what you want your life to look like so that you can easily answer some questions when you have to compare and contrast um, certain places. Really know what you want. Then the second thing is going to be know what you need. Right. So if you know that you're going to need to work with locals or that kind of thing, that's a whole different thing than coming over here and working remote. Um, and so know what you're going to need. Um, and the third thing is going to be uh, <laughs> choose diverse resources to get your information from. So, yes, YouTube is fine. They gives one view. You know, yes, you know, the different articles coming out is fine. But dig down into those Facebook groups so you can get information from the people that are actually living where you want to live so that you can ask questions. Um, dig down into the groups that represent the culture uh, that you're used to so that they have your cultural view on things. Um, and so those are the things I'm going to say, I think that you guys need to do, because I was very clear of what I wanted to do, what I wanted my life to look like. I know I need beach, um, mountains don't do it for me, you know, so there's certain things that were easy for me. So Colombia, should it be Medellin or should it be Cartagena? Well, Cartagena has beach, Medellin has mountains. I'm not interested in mountains, decision made, you know, so you just have to know these things so that you you can answer these questions for yourself um, and not just be bombarded with all this information and not know what to choose. Right. Good news. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, I said typically I ask my guests, you know, during this time of pandemic, 
what is something that they're doing in the now to navigate in this space. But just like I said, you had a different experience. So I mean, you didn't do that. But so so I'll change the question up for you a little bit and just okay. say, what are some things that you like to do? You you said you're living on the beach or so. You know, what are some things that you do to to unwind or to to have? What's your me time? What's your go to thing? So my go to um, is definitely the beach, right? But also, um, you know, not having to go to the beach all the time because here the rooftops are the new beach, right? Because most rooftops have um, swimming pools and my rooftop is amazing. So we have a swimming pool, it overlooks, we can see the Caribbean Sea from my, from my rooftop. Um, and also I have a rooftop attendant, y'all, that um, he will, he does, they don't sell drinks and food anymore, but if you bring your drinks and your food up there, he'll, he'll serve it. Um, and they have a grill. So all you gotta do is bring all the food up there and he will grill for you. And so that's how I love to unwind. I just did this last week. Um, um, and so I think it was a week ago today, actually, on Wednesday. And so I go up there and I work and I, I take swimming breaks and he's grilling. And so, you know, by the time he's finished grilling, it's lunchtime. And so I'm getting a little work done, but I'm really just enjoying my life is what I'm doing because, you know, it's not too much work when you got a margarita, right? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Okay. <laughs> in a swimsuit. I mean, how much work are you really doing? Right. Right. Now, how often do you come home, though? I mean, do you get, do you find yourself getting homesick every now and then? I do not. So, <laughs> so my family, my family day. right now is trying to figure out, what are you, when are you coming back? When are you coming? And I'm going to tell y'all, as soon as I get back to the United States, it's like plugging back into the matrix. Um, mm. and, and I don't necessarily like it. And then you guys have to understand that I don't necessarily have a home in the United States anymore. I have mm -hmm. a home base, um, mm -hmm. but I don't have a home. Um, right. So I, I, I instantly start to feel displaced. Like my things are right. back in Mexico. I, I want right. to go back home. I want to be right. in my bed. I want to come out of this. I want to unplug from this matrix of rush and people you know, rushing through life because that's how the U US is set up. You have to mm -hmm. rush because you're a worker and you have to go here, traffic and all that. Oh my Lord, I don't think that I've ever had anxiety in my life, except for when I contrast being in Mexico and coming back to the United States. Now I know what anxiety feels like. I don't right. like it. Right, and that makes sense. I mean, it, it is amazing. It is a totally different perspective, just like you said, because your lifestyle is, is changed and now you're relaxed and, 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 you know, you're doing these. And then just like you said, when you come back, it's like, you're having to plug into it's, it's anxiety. And this is the thing though, Kim, mm -hmm. it's not even me having to plug in necessarily, but everybody around you is plugged in. So it affects you. Right. All the energy around you is rush, rush, rush. So right. I might still be on the computer and, and only have what I have to do same as in Mexico. However, it's rush, rush, rush around me. And also now, you know, to get everywhere now, I need a car. And, you know, I gave up my car. So now I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I don't want to bother anybody. And so it's just a whole right. big thing right. that I'd rather not do. But I try to come back. Um, and, then, you know, when I come back, I have to visit Georgia and Alabama. So that's a whole thing, too. That's right. That's right. So you just make sure that when you come through, just let me know you're in town so I can at least say hi. We, we could definitely go and 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 sit down and 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 just talk about more about the experience but this has just been wonderful having you come and talk about expatriation and talk about your experience because you know we don't know how people are living in the now in different areas we just assume that everything or everyone's existence is similar to ours and it's so amazing how you know to to see the contrast and to see it things. Is. And I want to add that, one more thing to that, Kim. Sure. Because it's something that we don't realize until you spend some time outside of the United States. And that is, when we grew up, right, and we were learning about history, you know, things were happening, current events, we were taught in school that, you know, these countries are, you know, they are oppressed and their news is um, controlled mm -hmm. and they are sold propaganda, all of these things. So we grew right. up knowing what that is, but we don't grow up knowing we are getting propaganda and we mm -hmm. are getting oppressive news um, and we are getting things that have a whole governmental agenda in the United States. And it's hard to see until you go somewhere else and spend time and realize, oh my God, my whole country, my whole home country is really just a right. business. They don't even serve us real food anymore. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they, they push drugs. They do, you know, they do all of these things that make big corporations money and you go outside the country and you realize, you know, little things like you poop more. Why? Because you're eating real food. 
You right. might use plastic that's put in there right. to help the food be beefed up, but it's not, right. over, you know, you know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, natural juices and all these things mm -hmm. and that you're healthier, you're walking more, you're doing all these things and your whole existence is just healthier. But they won't tell you that if you just stay there, they're going to have you thinking there's the cartel in Mexico and it's not safe for U.S. citizens. Right. right. And just like you said, or, or that, that, that this is just the best place to be, but it may not be the best place for you. No. You know, and it's and, 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 place and, for a lot of people, yeah, and especially yeah. our people. Yeah. So to come outside of that and walk down the street and know that um, you don't have these microaggressions going on. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, our white cousins probably get more microaggressions than we do. Um, and and to just know that your brown skin um, is is not a target. Um, no. You know, to to feel like you know you are respected and that you are seen as a person, you know, those things, I mean, people don't even realize that right now there are studies that show that just being black has post-traumatic stress syndrome attached right. to it. Like right. it is legally a right. mental health issue to be black in America. That's right. That's right. And now people are saying, I don't have to be in America. I can be somewhere exactly. else. You and can thrive. Your mind by freeing mm -hmm. yourself of your location. There you go. There you go. Wow. This has been deep. This has been awesome. <laughs> I, you know, it, it does. It, it gives you a different perspective. It does. You know, and, and you don't realize it and, until you step out of it. Just like you said, because when we're in it, we're in a vacuum. Yep. And all we see is what's around us and what we know. And, and until we step away from that and, and can be on the outside looking in, we don't realize that, that there are different experiences and ones that you said can be better for us you know, and, and for, and for our way of living and for our lifestyle, you know, and just like you said, we can do it and do it with abundance. We can. So, you know, that and is then, I mean, I'm not going to tell you it's a blanket tax law, but did you know that there is a law that if you are living outside the United States and making money that the first hundred thousand dollars of your money can be tax free? How, how, how does that upgrade your life? Okay, children. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> wow. See, these are things that, that we don't know that we're, well, we're in the age of information and sometimes it's just a, a matter of digging a little deeper. I'm grateful for platforms like this so that information like this can get to people who don't know and, and, and we can at least begin to have the conversations about it so that people can know what their options are so that we don't feel trapped in, 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 the, in the spaces and in, in, in the existence that we're in when there are opportunities for us to do more and to be more. So I appreciate that. So like I said, before we wrap things up, tell people how they can get in contact with you because I'm sure that there may be some people who say, ah, I want to ask her another question. I want to know a little bit more. I want to know about her business and how she can help me with my business. Uh, how can they get in contact with you? So I am Shay Cannon uh, COO. So that's at Shay Cannon COO, S-H-A-C-A-N-N-O-N-C-O-O across all um, social media. And then I have a website, ShayCannon.com. So feel free to catch me in these social media streets and inbox <laughs> and say, hey, I heard you on Kim's wonderful show in the uh -huh. now. And I, uh -huh. I got some questions now. Can you hear awesome. me now? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So that's at Shay Cannon Co. A C O, uh, right? C O O. Oh, no. C O O at Chief all, operating at, officer C O O yeah, at all platforms, or you can get in contact with her at shaycannon.com. Yes. Okay, so hey, thank you so much for taking time to be with me. Is there a time difference where you are? It's the same time. Uh, are you on the same? Uh, Look, that's a whole thing, Kim. Look at you starting this. So you guys are uh, observe daylight savings time. Yeah. Um, most of the country does not. Uh, some does, but some do not. So. Uh, we're on Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Um, you are on Eastern Daylight Time. So right now we are even with your Central Daylight Time. When y'all oh, fall back, we'll be even again. We'll be even again. So okay, our time right. doesn't move in this city. Th that's a whole nother hour, right? It is. <laughs> it is. But thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I wish you continued success in all that you, you know, endeavor to do. You know, now I feel like, you know, hey, we got a chance to talk, I have a place to visit, you know, so I have to mm -hmm. come down, check things out for myself. Oh. You know, I'm a hands-on kind of person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, trying, to, trying, to, trying to swing by and see if we can come out and, and, and you know, see how things are going on on the other side. 
Okay, yeah. but thank you so much for being here. Again, continue success in all that you do. And with that, we will wrap up to that tonight's episode of the How Now podcast where we talk about how to live in the now. And until we see you the next time, I say peace. Peace.